just as good as a regular meeting. We pay that much attention, you know. <laughs> okay, close enough. So we're <coughs> welcome to uh, tonight's planning and zoning meeting. First item is Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Except the attorneys. Right. <laughs> Item number two tonight is the approval of uh, two sets of minutes. One was from November the 13th. Do I have a motion for approval or any changes that need to be added? So moved. Second. Take your choice, Rita. All those in favor say aye. 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 We. Opposed like sign. The second is November the 19th. This was the special mining LDR amendment hearing. Is there any uh, deletions or additions? If not, we need approval as submitted. Move to adopt as presented. Got a motion. And do I have a second? Second. Uh, Jerry, all those in favor say aye. 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 Pose like sign. Item three is an item on consent. Would anyone care to pull this item? If not, I'll read it into the record. It's uh, Diamond Tropic Inc. request for an administrative permit use approval for a veterinary clinic in a commercial plaza. And I uh, need a motion to approve. So moved. Greg's moved. Second. Craig, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, it passes unanimously. Item four is an item not on consent. This is Petro Algae request for a major site plan administrative permit approval for an aquaculture small scale algae production facility. You on that, John? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hamner. This is a request from Petroalgae for administrative permit for an aquaculture facility to grow algae. The, uh, the site is located on the south side of 101st Street, and it's west of the developed portion, what's historically known as the town of Felsmere, city of Felsmere. And it's essentially in line with 146th Avenue. Uh, the next slide is an overlay of, or an aerial overlay of the site, and it shows the physical features of the site. It shows some existing greenhouses, pond, and the southern, say, uh, one-fifth of the site being wooded. The, uh, the next slide is an outline of the site plan. The site's essentially a little over 18 acres. There's a little over 18,000 square feet of building area proposed with the development. The buildings are outlined in brown and I didn't outline some of the smaller buildings. The growth ponds and the prototype areas are outlined in green. And uh, the next slide is the traffic circulation. The driveway will be slightly realigned. Right now it's at an angle. It'll come in uh, essentially perpendicular to the street. There's a one-way traffic circulation system. And the applicant's proposing for the entire circulation system to be stabilized. And that's allowed in the LDRs because it is a low trip generator outside the urban service <coughs> area. would like to note that it does meet the administrative permanence <coughs> criteria, and there is one dedication involved, and that's a 15-foot wide drainage and utility easement to uh, essentially make up their fair share of a, a right-of-way that runs along the east side of the property, and that will need to be dedicated uh, prior to site plan release. As far as stormwater goes, there's a couple of different uh, collection areas that are also used to meet the cut and fill balance, and then it's routed to a single pond where it's treated, and then it outfalls to a canal on the south side of the uh, ditch on the south side of 101st Street. As far as environmental issues go, there's a small wetlands, just under half an acre. They're going to, uh, there's no impact of that wetland. They're going to leave that undisturbed. They do have a 50-foot perimeter buffer around it, and that's the line you see around it where there's no impact to that buffer. And then as far as uplands go, in the southern portion, and you saw that on the area where those trees are, uh, it's a native upland, and it's just a little over three acres, and the applicant's going to set aside a conservation easement just over half an acre to accommodate the 15% native upland set-aside requirement, and that's another easement that will need to be granted prior to site plan release. As far as the landscape plan goes, most of the landscape requirements are going to be met by preserved trees. Uh, in the areas where they're planting trees, the trees have been pushed to the perimeter to preserve 
good solar exposure to the site for the principal purpose of the, the algae growth and solar collection. And the, uh, the green areas there show where the, uh, the planted landscape will be and the retained landscape will be mostly in the southern and northern perimeters and on the east and west perimeters. Based on the analysis, staff recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission grant administrative permit use approval with the conditions as outlined by staff. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of uh, staff? Yes, if I might. Do we have any uh, statutes on the books about odor control? This says there's going to be no odor. George, do we? Do you know if there are any standing statutes that the county has on odor control? I'm, I'm not aware of any, but Stan might know better than I do. Not that I don't trust the little buggers, but uh, I've been through yeah. this before. Yeah, we don't have any specific <clears throat> LDR standards on, on odors. No LDRs on odor. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No, sir. Where is the fill dirt going to go? Okay. Would the applicant care to be heard? <laughs> he heard me. I have some questions of the applicant. Okay. Would, would the applicant come up with this so we can answer some questions for Donna? <laughs> you want engineering, you want traffic, or you want, uh, would you like the gas station attendant? Well, actually, you just asked a question about fill dirt. How deep are the ponds, sir? Uh, the ponds. Oh, I'm sorry, your name. Corey Howe, Kimley Horn Associates, 601 21st Street, Suite 300, Vero Beach, Florida. The uh, ponds are approximately six feet deep, normal standard stormwater treatment ponds. Right. They're not very, the algae's not very thick. Oh, excuse me, the growth ponds. Right. The growth ponds are two feet, two, two feet deep. Okay, so there's not an issue. No. All right. Uh, one other question. What type of truck traffic will uh, this produce? It's anticipated very minor truck traffic, anticipated no more than one truck per week. Those were my only questions. Thank you. Do pick up just to pick up the algae. What do you, where is what's the disposal process? I mean, you're taking the algae where the wrong person. It, it goes into a. Are you going to have a processing facility on here? Or are you taking it into Orlando? No, actually, we're taking it. Up. You need to come up with it. Give us your name and address. <coughs> I'm Jim McCreary. I'm the Petro Algae Chief Operating Officer. Um, we are going to be processing only tiny little bits of the algae on site. The rest of it's going to go to a toll processor location not yet selected. Oh, okay. uh, somebody in an industrially zoned area. Okay. What's the uh, time profile you're looking at for building this site? Uh, we'd like to start as soon as we can and we'd like to finish in the uh, May-June time Pro frame okay. if possible. And I noticed this thing has a, a note on it that the site will revert back to A1 or agricultural if the uh, system uh, doesn't make it. Is this a beta test site we're looking at here, or is, are you guys going to look to stay? Uh, it is a beta test site. It's a demonstration site. It's a commercial demonstration site, really. We want to prove that it Proof works. Proof of purpose. And uh, then we want to bring a lot of people to visit it. Uh, prospects, people who have told us that they're ready to go forward with uh, large-scale projects if we can satisfy them that it works. And what do you call a large-scale progress or processing plant? Not on the land or the on the land. land. Uh, large-scale projects are uh, in the hundreds and thousands of acres. Uh, which we obviously would not propose to do on this site. Yeah, okay. This is a proof of process site, really. Okay, thank you, sir. Is there any arrangement for reclamation of the, the land then when, if you, when you decide that you're going to go on to bigger and better things? Uh, it is a leased mm -hmm. property, and the terms of our lease with the uh, uh, property owner require us to return it to basically bare condition uh, before we vacate. Good answer. Okay, thank you. If you leave, Marsh Landing is going to be really sorry to see you go. I understand you guys eat lunch there every day. Uh, yeah, we, we have uh, um, our, our people like it there, and when we bring out of town and especially out of country visitors, they, they, they get a big kick out of going there and having gator. Well, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Uh, George, this is quasi-judicial since they've spoken. You want to swear them in now? Or? <laughs> 
We can go ahead and do that. I thought you guys were just going to approve it and not actually uh, ask for speakers. But, yeah, if you want to go ahead and you swear all, in Those who spoke, would you stand up to be sworn? It's a quasi-judicial item. You need to affirm that what you said is the truth. <laughs> do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. You did, you did, right? Yeah. Other, did you swear? If there, no other, if, there no other, if there are no other questions, we I need a motion. One, I had one other question, George, of course. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> at first, I, you've answered the questions, actually. At first, I thought, why does somebody want to grow it when I try so hard to get rid of it? <laughs> How but, many swimming pools? Uh, I welcome the project. I'm glad to see that done. That's, that's, a, that's good. But thank you. The good news is here it could consume acreage if, if it works. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other questions? I move approval with staff recommendation. Thank you. Second, third. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Good luck. When you guys get it up and running, I'd like the invitation to come out and see it. Thank you. I've already had it. You haven't been out? I mean, when they get it running. Yeah. We're going to talk about paving the road tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Turn lanes. That would be nice. <laughs> Um, next item is sunny side up. This is a request to rezone approximately 40.3 acres for RM6 and RM8 residential multifamily district to PDTND plan development traditional neighborhood design and obtain conceptual PD plan approval for a project to be known as sunny side up. Okay, John, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hemner. This is a request from Sunnyside Up for conceptual PD plan and rezoning approval for a traditional neighborhood design development. It, uh, the applicant has been in the process for several years, and it's, it's finally made it to the Planning and Zoning Commission. They've coordinated with the Regional Planning Council, <coughs> with the uh, owner of the Simon Mall, and with the uh, area residents, neighborhood residents. So they've, uh, they've been working this for, homework. for a while. And as far as the process goes, this slide now. shows the process. The, uh, the applicant is seeking the approval of that first step, planning and zoning commission recommendation. Once you all make a recommendation, it will go to the Board of County Commissioners. If the Board approves it, you all will see the subsequent preliminary plan developments. Those will come back before you all uh, in a lot more detail. So right now what we have is very conceptual. If it's approved, the preliminary PDs will come back before you all, and you all will see a, a little bit more. This slide shows the overall area, shows the zoning of the surrounding and the subject properties. Next slide is an overall aerial, and it shows some of the development adjacent. Woodfield plan developments to the north, 26 streets immediately north. There is some intervening development between 26th Street and the subject property on the east side, which is the Bella Rosa or <coughs> development. South and east of the subject site is the Rivera Estate, which is a single-family area. And then south of the subject site is the Indian River Mall. And the green area you see north of the mall is also owned by the mall. It's the mall's retention, the mall's conservation area, and essentially a green belt that separates the hard improvements of the mall from this site. And uh, just to the west of the subject site across the road is the Bella Vista development, just to the west of the subject site. Next slide is a, a closer detail of the subject site so you get a feel for the actual site. And one of the things about the site that's noticeable is the configuration of the site. And because it's so long east to west and so shallow north and south, it's a very difficult site to really put a plan together. And that's one of the reasons I think the applicant spent so much time is the, the basic configuration. And again, trying to get something to work and get a development uh, design to flow on a site like that. So. That gets us to the design. And this is the conceptual plan outlined in yellow is the boundary. It's just a little over 40 acres, 350 residential units. The density is 8.68 <coughs> units per acre, which is above the 8 units per acre allowed in the M1 land use. And the applicant is also proposing 32,000 square feet of retail office, which is also not allowed in the M1 land use. And it is allowed through the traditional neighborhood design and policy 18. It's actually an incentive to promote developments like this through the comprehensive plan. Uh, give you a little more density. And with traditional neighborhood design, it requires a mixed use component, so it allows for up to 10 percent of your land area to be developed as commercial office and those types of uses. Uh, this slide shows the phases, and the phases aren't in any particular order. Again, it's very conceptual. 
the things to know about the phases is any phase needs to be able to stand alone independently, meaning have the transportation, utilities, storm water, all those things. And then any subsequent phase built has to stand alone or with the previous phase. And just let me run through the proposed the developments. Starting at the west end, the applicant's proposing multifamily development. As you move to the east, the town center, and the town center is a mixed-use development uh, consisting of multifamily and commercial office. As you move further east, there are two multifamily uh, types of development, one a larger building and then uh, a smaller type building. And then to the east is the single family. And the single family is over here for a reason. It's adjacent to Rivera Estates. And again, just to the north is Bella Rosa, which are townhome style developments at eight units per acre. This is the traffic circulation plan. Again, it's fairly schematic. What I would like to note is there are six access points to the, uh, to the proposed project. Two are interconnections with the Bella Rosa project. One is an interconnection at the south end with the Indian River Mall Ring Road. The applicant will need to get authorization from the Simon Group owner of the mall to, uh, to make that connection. The other is at the west end, which is a connection to 65th Avenue, which is also essentially a road that's owned by the mall, and they'll also get, have to get authorization to, uh, to connect to that road. And then the two access points to 26th Street. The main access point, which lines up with Woodfield, which is the west one, will be a full movement driveway. It'll be a right in, right out. It will have a right turn lane and a left turn lane constructed. And the eastern driveway will have a left turn lane. This driveway on the eastern end may eventually become a right in, right out only. When 26th Street is improved, uh, there'll be a median and it'll be at that point, there'll be traffic engineering's decision as to whether that ends up uh, with a median there. And that becomes <coughs> right in, right out. Uh, as far as the internal circulation plan, the red line shows the overall major spine road through the development. The blue and the purple lines are minor streets and alleys and driveways that will service <coughs> some of the development. And then also uh, there's a pedestrian plan that's also included in this. There's a sidewalk along the south side of 26th Street. There are sidewalks on both sides of the road throughout the projects. And then there's also a trail system that will uh, integrate with the mall. And again, they'll need to get approval uh, from the mall owner to have those uh, have those roads or paths, excuse me, tie into the mall. John, is the road into the mall? I mean, I didn't notice any purple, any line. I mean, that's that's considered a, a, an, an actual roadway into the mall, correct? Uh, yeah. Are you talking about 65th Avenue? Oh, down, go down to the bottom circle. Oh, correct. Yes, yes. I right, just did right. line. Yes. Yeah, right. I missed the line. They, they haven't dashed that in be or lined it in because, but this arrow is indicating. I mean, it's that intended to be put in, but they. Yeah. But the only thing they, they need the mall's permission is that, or is that it going to be part of this for sure? They need the mall's permission in order to. <clears throat> so yes, it is conditional upon okay. obtaining the mall's approval. Yeah. What's conditional? The project approval or that street? <clears throat> that actual connection is subject to the mall's authorization. Both of these uh, two connections, the one at the Mall Ring Road and the one at uh, 65th Avenue, which is essentially the northern driveway to the mall, both so of those. You're not suggesting that the approval be condition, be this be a condition of approval? No? Uh, no, I'm saying that it will take yeah. the mall's approval for those to be constructed. Right. But if the mall does not approve that, that is not going to be a condition of this project itself, the approval of the project itself, or is it? The way we have the condition structured is that they need to, I believe, have five and make the attempts to get those five so we would evaluate how, and we would want to talk to the ball as well. And uh, let me uh, go and uh, let me, I think make condition... The point is, if you can get that, we can ask the applicant about it when they do their presentation. Yeah, that's and, a good idea. Okay. Okay. Actually, condition 1B deals with the... Uh, Isn't that that's the easement behind, or is that the easement for the, the road, 1B? That's prior to the preliminary plan approval. So, again, prior to that, getting to that stage, we would want to see those authorizations from the mall 
And again, that's before they get that far down the design path with the firm design. Oh, well, just 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 not to belabor, just to be clear, you all have requested and, and, and asked for five entrances and exits. Actually, six. And, or, you've got six shown, but you, you would we want the, five, the, and that's five minimum for the project to proceed. Right. This is conceptual, so <coughs> should they have to shift around, we'll deal with that when it comes back for final. If they don't, yeah. and if they don't meet our, they may have five, but if we don't like it, that, then we can deal with it then too, right? Yeah. Correct. That's okay. Right. That's fine. That overall traffic dispersion. Thank you. <coughs> good, good answer, George. All right. The next slide deals with the zoning. With a plan development, you're essentially crafting your own zoning district. And what we've done is we compared what they're requesting with the RM8, which would be the zoning on the majority of the site. They're looking for single-family uses, which are permitted in both districts. They're looking for multifamily units, which are permitted in both districts. And they're looking for commercial uses tied to the limited commercial, which is not permitted in the RM8 district. But again, through the mixed use of policy 18 is allowed in a TND. As a matter of fact, it's encouraged in the TND to get the mixed use criteria. And what they're doing is they're proposing limited commercial uses minus some of the lodging and some of the automotive related type of uses that are allowed in the uh, CL zoning district. This slide relates to the single family waivers and the single family development proposed. And I'll briefly run through those. They're proposing 50 foot wide lots. 10-foot front and rear setbacks, zero or five foot on the side yard setback, such that the home could either be centered in the lot with five feet on either side, or a zero on one side and 10 on the opposite side. Either way, the home would be at a maximum 30 feet wide. For the front-loaded garages, they would be required to be set back 25 feet from the front property line, which would mean they'd be recessed from the front of the house. So you wouldn't have the, the garage as the dominant feature. And again, that's another uh, TND type design consideration. And one of the other things I'd like to point out to you all is for the homes adjacent, the single family homes adjacent to Rivera Estates, uh, those will be limited to single story uh, where they're adjacent to Rivera Estate. So they'll be single family and single story. The next slide is the overall PD waivers and it has a single family as well as the rest of it. I'm just going to highlight the, uh, the portion that does not deal with a single family. In the town center, they're looking at getting a 10-foot front yard setback so they can build a, bring those buildings closer to the street so you have more of a downtown feel. The other buildings will maintain the 25-foot setback. Again, the rear yards will be a 25-foot setback. And as far as building separation, uh, interior to the project, it will be a 10-foot separation, which is essentially what's required by the building code. They will re requesting to reduce the open <coughs> space on the single family lots to 20% and increase the building coverage to 35. But the overall project will have a 40%, so they'll make up for it in the common green areas. Some other issues I'd like to talk about are the parking in town center. The parking for all of the uh, residential uses, they're committing to do the two spaces per unit, which meets the uh, county's requirement. In, again, as a conceptual, they're not sure about the number of the quantity of uses, the types of uses, the things like that within town center. So they said they're looking at meeting the parking ordinance or at the time they come back with the preliminary PD, they would come in with a shared use study and we've had a number of those. And what's uh, the concept between that is there'd be shared parking between the residential uses and the commercial uses such that it wouldn't be a total aggregation of those requirements, but it would be something less. And that's allowed by the code. So they've requested the ability to take care of that, take that <clears throat> opportunity through the code. The next item are the streetscape or streetscape improvements. It's required of all TND, PND type developments. And they've shown, again, some very conceptual uh, renditions of that. But those are more details that you'd see at the preliminary PD state when they came in, how they're going to treat the streetscape, street trees, uh, pavement treatment, curves, how the building build two lines, things like that, and the architectural criteria. For a lot of the larger buildings, they really want to showcase some of the architecture, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but that's something, again, you'd also see in greater detail at the preliminary PD. I gave you in your packets um, some of the architectural details 
And I haven't included any slides because they just didn't reproduce well. But uh, you all have those, and again, you'd have greater detail at the time of preliminary PD approval. And the, uh, as far as policy 18.1 goes, the staff report goes into a great amount of detail about how they meet policy 18.1, so I don't want to belabor that. And lastly, there's a reverter, a 10-year reverter. If this does get approved, nothing gets built for 10 years. The zoning would revert to the zoning that it is today, essentially RM8 with a little bit of RM6. As far as the buffering and landscape plan, I'd like to describe <coughs> that. And essentially, every place where they're not adjacent to a road or they're not adjacent to the mall, there's going to be a tight B buffer with a six-foot opaque feature. And let me see if I can get the mouse and just... It runs up all along Rivera Estates, up the east property line, along Bella Vista, down through the preserve, and again, that'll be preserved area, and then all the way up to 26th Street. So all that's going to be type B buffer with a six-foot opaque feature. This uh, shows the street trees, which will be part of the street tree, and it gives you a real conceptual idea about the scope and the magnitude of the street trees. Along their frontage with the mall, they're planning on reducing what would be the normal buffering requirement to one tree per 40 feet. And the reason they would like to do that is they would like, essentially, their residents to have the benefit of all that green space that's on the mall site, essentially not buffering themselves from a large open green space. And they're also going to work with the mall to <coughs> reduce the buffering. There's a 25-foot setback required. And what they're planning on doing is getting an agreement with the mall that allows 15 feet of that, essentially a setback easement on the mall site, saying that they're going to, the mall would agree to lock up that 15 feet to count as part of their 25 feet. So that would be yet another thing that prior to preliminary plat that we're going to need to see is that agreement with them for the mall to, uh, to lock that up, or they'll have to go back and uh, essentially redesign it on their own site. Adjacent to the, the roadway, 65th Avenue, there'll be a 25-foot wide uh, roadway buffer, which is the planting of Colvin, close to a tight B buffer. And then I want to talk a little bit about the 26th Street uh, frontage, since that's the most public and what will be seen the most. The applicants proposing to culvert the canal so they'll need the permission from the Indian River Farms Water Control District to do that. And in doing that will be a, a very good aesthetic benefit. I think um, the place that's most visible that's done that recently is the, uh, the Vero Beach High School. And it's really improved yeah. the, uh, the look of that area along 16th Street uh, with the trees behind it. So that's been a good aesthetic. So they're planning on doing that and going to one tree every 40 feet. And that's so they can showcase the architecture of the buildings that will front 26th Street. And again, they've uh, provided a little bit of a detail, at least conceptually, about the uh, types of buildings that's been included in your backup. But that would need to be done. If they, if they can't secure that, then they have to meet that 25 feet on their own site. And uh, again, that squeezes them a little bit more north and south. And as you can see, the site's pretty shallow north and south. Environmental issues, uh, the site's mostly Brazilian pepper. Uh, the area that I've outlined in green on the slide is roughly the area of the 7.24 acres of native upland that's on the, they've committed to essentially just over an eight acre of native upland set aside that'll be in an easement and that'll meet the 15%, that's the minimum. There could be more, and again, that's uh, as we get into the preliminary PD, that would be decided where that would occur. There are no wetlands on the site. And as far as tree preservation goes, the greatest opportunity for tree preservation, I think really the only worthwhile trees are going to be in the area of that native upland. And again, that would be a preliminary PD. We'd get a detailed tree survey like some of the ones you all have seen with other developments at that point in the development process. As far as public benefits go, again, culverting 26 Street is going to be a big aesthetic as well as a safety uh, improvement. Uh, the integration with the mall, uh, pedestrian-wise, vehicularly, uh, infill near a major commercial. Again, the, when you look at infill and you look at where the public has invested dollars for infrastructure, this is one of those areas, rather than sprawling out more towards the uh, the <coughs> the edge of uh, the development area. Uh, right turn lane on 26th Street at the west entrance and publicly accessible amenities are the benefits. 
As far as dedications and improvements, again, culverting the canal is a big one. The left turn lanes at both entrances on 26th Street, the right turn lane on 26th Street, the west entrance, the public sidewalk on 26th Street, and the conservation area. With that, staff does recommend that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend that the Board of County Commissioners rezone and grant conceptual plan approval for the Sunnyside Up project with the conditions listed in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions of staff? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I have several. So. Remind me of the 26th Street widening project schedule. Where are we on that, Bob? Somebody? The good news is the eastern part of that project from US 1 to 43rd Avenue is progressing real well. We're probably at about 90% design. The city of Vera Beach is managing that project. <coughs> they're, they're managing the design, and they'll also be managing the construction. Uh, we're, we're doing that part first, and that's a, a real important project because we've got grants for probably 30 or 40 percent of the construction. We, we, we're, we're using a number of different grants. We've got an intermodal grant. We've got uh, some TRIP funding. So everything's going real well, and I think within the next six to eight months, it'll probably be under construction, that part. Now, west of 43rd is a little more problematic. You may have seen reference to our capital improvements program yeah. changes. Bottom line is revenues declining everywhere. Our, our impact fee revenue is down probably 90 percent. Our gas tax revenue is down because it's raised taxes. It's no big deal. But not only, but not only are impact fees down, traffic impact fees are down, but gas tax is down because people were driving less when gas prices were high. And also, once a local option sales tax revenue is down, and we, and we allocate 28 percent of the local option sales tax to transportation improvements. So bottom line is we're having to push back a lot of projects and the um, the the 43rd West part of the 26th Street project right now is is not programmed. It um, would like to do it. It's, it's a really good project, but it's not on the five year uh, yeah. horizon. What about the calling? type C level of service around county wide? <laughs> Probably not there either. Is the, it? the level of service is OK <laughs> on that road. Level of service is OK. Well, you're looking at 75 percent on those streets that you've got on the, on the list here. You're down to 75 percent now. And the 58th Street uh, Route 60 exchange is going to take place when? Part, oh, oh, that they, um, the intersection improvement yeah, the intersection. for State Road 60 and Kings Highway, that is still on schedule. It's a pretty expensive project. And um, I'm not sure. I think within the next two years. Next two years. Maybe three. But this won't be built out. This, that's, the, that was my, that was my next out. point. This, this won't be up at this until those are probably done, right? Or about the same any, time. Any other questions, Jerry? Yeah. Uh, uh, at what point did the uh, culvert be covered? Uh, what phase? The beginning? Is there any timetable on that? We would be looking for the culverting to occur with construction of any portion of the project that fronts 26th Street. So I mean, it's got to be done with. Which is pretty much the whole project. The majority of it certainly is, yeah. Otherwise, you get back to the single family, and that's about the only portion that does lanes if you don't do it. Yeah. Um, Let's see. If, um, if if the applicant would listen to this in case we don't, when they in their presentation, I, the the questions I have revert, re, go back to your buffering again, and then on those driveways because we're talking about conditional uses, which I'm assuming says we need to see this if we're going to move yeah. further, and I would expect that to be an emotion. So I need to make sure the applicant's clear on how they address that. First one is the 15 feet. Now, that if they have a 15 foot buffer, this the part with the mall where they're they're sharing. Does the mall have extra green space? Is that what works so that you can borrow green space from the mall to make it work? Is that the intention? Correct. And let me go back to the. And because you use some terminology that I thought was kind of uh, vague. You've got uh, <laughs> there's there's a 25 foot setback required. And the applicant's looking at providing 10 feet on their own property. It's a 25-foot so, PD setback buffer area. I, that was a terminology I hadn't heard before. Right. So. so they're looking at providing 15 feet. So they would need to get some sort of authorization from Another the mall. 10 feet. And for the 15. And you can see on the aerial, 
that there is a large setback and a you know large green area that it appears to work but I mean we all work in in square footage and all on green space within and does the mall when the mall was built do they have extra green space that they could because you're talking about assigning this to Sunnyside from the mall side it's the setback and not necessarily the green space they're going to meet their green space interior their own projects on a percentage basis okay all right so now I can this is something that the mall could do when without jeopardizing I mean I would think the mall would be in favor of this and they probably do anything they could to have you know six or eight hundred some some however many people they might shop there easily I'd be glad to let them have it but I just didn't know if it conflict with any other the square footage requirements the other was on these five on the driveways we're saying we want five acceptable driveways we can't just go one two three four five out on 26 I mean we've got to have with the intention is to have the flow through here I know Richard and I know the group will do a very good job but that's on the when we approve this we're talking about acceptable entrances correct correct the number nine is talking about because those specifically tie in with the purpose and meaning and you could not do just five on 26 I mean the county wouldn't approve that just from an access management standpoint yeah so yes they need to be five with a logical purpose the other thing is the upland area appears to be on their plan depending upon how you shifted it there's a looks like one of their is that a the dark spot is that one of the greens green spot green areas correct the shaded you see the shaded area in that is that isn't that isn't that considered green space or is that something else is that right right in the middle right where the green where the trees are it's what is the indication on the I thought it was part of the green space it's shaded black on the on this particular right native up on set aside yeah eight acres is that the is that the area that they're talking about setting aside so they're going to preserve that area the whole area I was confused they said the one acre and I thought they were going to be diving into part of the tree area it looks like from your there's there's an area I guess where there's two buildings see the heart of the green area slants away from that and that's I didn't understand that doesn't match that it's 10 percent this is 10 percent of the whole it's eight acres of open space 10 percent is about one and 0.8 acres that's what that's what this shit just look bigger than that and I see it confused 15 percent now they need a lot of hands on okay okay that was it Jerry go ahead I have one more question they're going to increase the size of the lake with the malls approval or how's that going to work there's two paths they're pursuing right now one is a standalone lake on their own property where they do not need the permission of the mall and that's sort of their fallback position what they would like to do is what you've indicated is essentially cross the property line and just expand the malls lake and that way you get a lot more volume because you take out that essentially a big triangular berm that runs between the two lakes and they would like to get that worked out again they need the authorization of the mall authorization of st. John's to do that but that's what they're hoping to do but their fallback is just a a single lake or a lake on their own site in that same area or yes I mean it looks like for better for worse when we get into the further into here they've got authorization the mall is tied pretty heavily to this project it is and they purchase this property from the mall they have a relationship and they've been talking to the mall for some time now so that was my next question they have some level of comfort but yes it is heavily tied to they have a really any other questions if not we'll get the applicant up question George go ahead John on your recommendation 1a where you say they're going to obtain written approval from Indian River Farms to use the canal right away for landscape and buffering purposes you're talking about the infill and the culverting of the canal Correct. There's a 30-foot canal right away that they would be culverting, and then they would be using that for landscaping so they could come closer to that property line. If they don't get that, the applicant would like to be able to essentially drop back and do the 25 feet on their own property and bring that back before the Planning and Zoning Commission. You have to make the change. The Indian River Farms usually, if it's an open canal, they don't want anything associated with their right of way because of the cleaning of the canals, but with culverting, that's what you you mean. Yes, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Careful about his territory. <laughs> right. Any other questions? If if not, we'll I have one. before that. Okay. The, the culvert would run the applicant's entire stretch of 26th Street, which would be from 65th Avenue down to the point where Bella Rosa starts. So it would be. 
I don't have an exact dimension, but it would be their entire frontage. And what about the five or six entrance ways? Are they going to be gated? No. No, no, this would be open. The streets could be private, but open to the public. And on the south side of 26, there's going to be a sidewalk there then? Yes. If the culvert gets approved, and again, that's contingent on the culvert because we don't have canals on the culvert doesn't get approved, the sidewalk would also, right. Is there a sidewalk on the opposite side of the road there, on Woodfield side? There is a sidewalk. Looks like it. Yeah, there's a sidewalk on the north side. On the north side. Yeah, there is. Excuse me, John. You said if the culvert doesn't get approved, then what happens? Then there would not be a sidewalk on the south side of 26th Street because we don't want to put a pedestrian facility that close to the canal. So this is not going to be contingent upon them getting approval to culvert the canal. Okay. All right. So if they want to go to Publix or someplace further east, then there would be bicycle paths or some way of getting towards that general area? From a pedestrian standpoint, there's a pedestrian interconnection. They're trying to have several pedestrian interconnections with the mall, one at the very west end that would come down, and this would kind of put you out somewhere behind Target Home Depot area. But others that also connect in. So, yes, from a pedestrian standpoint, there's a potential to make your way. And, again, there's a lot of details to work out to actually have that occur. Yeah, this is conceptual. It wouldn't happen on 26 until they connect the rest of the sidewalk. So whether they had it or not, there's still more sidewalk to be done out there, I think. Um, any more questions? If not, we'll let the applicant be heard, and then we can answer some more questions if necessary. Go ahead, Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Bruce Barkett. I practice at 756 Beachwood Boulevard, and I'm representing the applicant. I really, I'm only going to address one small point before Mr. Bialoski comes up and presents his short presentation. But, um, Mr. Smith, you brought up a point about the approval from Indian River Farms Water Control District to culvert the canal, and that's certainly one issue. But a separate issue is to use that culverted um, canal for landscape and buffering purposes. And the way this condition reads, it says that we require uh, approval from Indian Farms to use it for landscape and buffering purposes. Well, what I'm concerned about is if they let us culvert it and they don't let us landscape it, I don't want to have to come back to you to, mm -hmm. to, to allow us to landscape on our own property. So I would just like to have the alternative built into the condition that yeah. if we don't get their permission, then we can just if, meet. That you have the right to landscape on theirs if you have it. If not, you'll do it on your oh, own. No, no. You're, you're going to landscape. But, That's correct. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. So I'd just like an amendment to that condition. Or, thank you. Mr. Barkett, a question. On the, uh, the trail, the trail part, the trailway, the, uh, the walking path, that's on the mall property. Is there a maintenance agreement, or what's the agreement between this project and the mall on maintenance of that? Uh, you know, I would have to let um, Mr. Bialowski and Mr. Edder address how far along that's come. We. I know that um, when we purchased this property from them, we had several agreements with them, and there's been some ongoing dialogue in terms of the interconnectivity. I don't know if the final details of who's maintaining what have been worked out yet. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Richard Bialoski, 685 Reef Road, Indian River County. Uh, very pleased to be here tonight. John, if you can queue up our uh, PowerPoint there. Um, I understand that there's a, a big party somewhere in town tonight, so I've been asked to uh, make this presentation very brief. So I've take, take as long as you'd like, Richard. Until we receive our invitation. So. You're recording right, so take as long as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, take as well, long as you want. Well, I, I actually uh, had, 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 have cut it down from the original two hours. Uh, <laughs> I like mine over medium. Um, let me see how this, how does this work then, John? Is that just right there? Go. Oh, no, you should, I think if you just click, you'll go. Doesn't. Okay. So um, we'll be very happy to answer your questions. Our, our team is here tonight. Uh, David Edder and I are the uh, managers of uh, Sunnyside Up LLC. Um, Keith Pellin, uh, Brian Good, and Jim Vetter are here from uh, Kimley Horn to answer any questions. Jody Sisk, who's our uh, biological consultant from Zev Cohen Associates. Um, and, uh, of course, Bruce Barquette is here uh, if we have any, any questions that Bruce needs to address. Um, I, I did not ask our architectural team to come tonight, but I wanted to say something about that because um, 
sunny side up i would <coughs> like to say is, is a very serious project and uh, one of the reasons we would like to take the time that we won't take is is really to make it clear how special this is because um, it's taken a very long time to get here most applicants blame the staff for delays but i'm afraid in this case we can only blame ourselves for the delays and if you uh, are familiar with something called uh, obsessive compulsive disorder you'll probably understand why we revised this project and revised this project studied revised again uh, many many feedback loops with our architects keith uh, pellin's done a great job as our uh, land planner and Keith has been to the Florida Panhandle to photograph every uh, uh, TND and new urbanist community in the Panhandle. We've taken trips down to Palm Beach to look at some really outstanding projects. We've we've just done what we could to make this a very special project. The I wanted to say something about our architectural team because you know we don't have exemplary architecture in Indian River County. There's some exceptions. Or, or at least in the visible spectrum we don't but behind the gated guard gates of the gated communities we have some of the finest residential architecture in the united states and we have some of the finest residential architects as well and even though i'm an architect i decided i wouldn't be the architect of any of these sections that i would take advantage of the fact that uh, none of these architects have really done much in the public view and and uh, these are f architects who are deeply trained in new urbanism who are award-winning uh, international renowned uh, Scott Merrill for instance who I think is, has no public buildings to show for himself in Indian River County is doing work in Russia Saudi Arabia United Arab Emirates China so we, we've we had a great time working with what we think are some of the most talented uh, folks we could possibly find uh, staff originally sent us to Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council to do a charrette of this project, to have TCRPC's urban planners address the design in a design session. Uh, staff John, Stan, and Bob were all there for the morning session to uh, input um, the county's perspective on this. Uh, you should know that the representatives of the mall were there. Their, their civil engineer was there. We have been working very closely with the mall. There are certain agreements that still need to be formalized, but the mall has uh, not really objected to anything except this one um, we had one another vehicular connection there and they felt that that was too challenging through their uh, created wetlands so that has become a, a raised walkway uh, pedestrian connection instead mm -hmm. um, which is fine because this project is about connectivity and walkability the ability to walk to the mall uh, the original master plan was done. We came out of that with something that we could have almost come here with, but uh, a few years later, uh, I, again, I, I go back to the um, OCD reason for taking so long. This is the final master plan. It doesn't vary a whole lot from the original Treasure Coast uh, proposal, but it's immensely refined. Um, staff pointed out the, all those locations. Uh, and and the different phases of our development in terms of walkability you can see from our town center in the sec in the, in the center most of the development with the exception of the single family is really within a quarter of a mile walking radius um, and the farthest point is a half mile walking radius sometimes it's said that uh, nobody walks anywhere here but I, I think part of that is not laziness it's the fact that you know, there isn't a whole lot of charm in walking from one end of the outlet mall to the other. Um, you, you know, you're probably inclined to get in your car and drive over to the other side. We have all sorts of in, interconnectedness, mid-block connections. I, I think the walking experience here will be a very charming one. And here I'm going to have David. If you could pass out the popcorn, um, we've got a little uh, animation of of the project. We kind of let you get a, a real sense of what it's like. This is starting on 26th Street. <coughs> should be playing. And one more click. There we go. And technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. And, 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 and at least I rehearsed this one about 20 times because this is the one I did not want to have break down. Um, let's try again. All right, John, we could go... Um, 
to uh, back to the. Let me give this to you. If we could go back to the Windows Media file on uh, on in the file, we we'll just do it that way. Is there? Yeah. yeah so these that are one. not gated. There you go. You can still control it. Uh, I wonder what, 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 if I could control it if my eyes were good enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all John's fault. Click, click. Oh, you got it. Go to the express. Uh, just, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> he can see his monitor. I can't. Easiest see Easiest thing is that's just say no, and then you delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. 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 Let's that was originally on the county's list of places to study roundabouts, and <coughs> late on in the game, Chris uh, Mora told us no roundabout unless we were willing to take it out later. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, it was, it was it was enough work to even contemplate taking it out of the uh, animation, but taking it out in reality was too much. So we have uh, let that go. You're starting now in the town center. As you enter, there's an outdoor plaza with eating. Uh, a place for outdoor eating, outdoor performances, general gathering, because this is all about gathering and sense of place and sense of community. This is looking from the mall area toward the townhomes, townhome area designed by uh, Peter Moore and Associates. Um, and you'll see the uh, the walk uh, along the the townhomes are. Um, well, you'll see in a moment how as we swing in here, uh, face. Courtyards, uh, gathering places. Again, ma there are many parks and gathering places in this. Uh, Peter was inspired by the traditional row houses of older cities. And then we come to Scott Merrill's town center. Um, this is the corner of uh, Keating uh, Boulevard and uh, Bowling, <laughs> I think it's a Bowling Alley. Um, and. Uh, this is this is the town center portion of the town center that fronts the uh, mall's created wetlands and the mall's uh, um, retention areas. Uh, I like this this part of the street. It reminds me a bit of Winter Park that has a shopping on one side mm -hmm. and the uh, the park across the street. Uh, as you look down the road, you begin to see Clem Schaub's uh, condominiums which in your plan look like rather massive buildings, but Clem has done a really masterful job at breaking these up to, to appear to be very delicately scaled uh, row houses. And here is uh, Mark Vigneault and Tom Hoos's uh, uh, atrium apartments, another very traditional uh, building type. You'll notice that the buildings are close to the street. It's a principle of new urbanism that we address the street, that the street's a friendly place of interaction, not something that we want to buffer the view from. And, and you get the sense of what a, you know, the walking experience of the project. Okay, I'll, oh no, I'm not done with yet. I, we really, let's see, John, we may not really need to show the rest of the slides. Um, after that, I think there's, uh, there's nothing in there of, of real significance. It's just recirculating. That was that was impressive, Richard. Well, we, we, we can we can thank it go to um, Abello of uh, another local. We have really tried. We have a huge talent pool in this community, and again, I, I think we don't see it in the built environment, and and I think that's much to our detriment. So part of our program here was to encourage that local creativity. I think uh, you know we've had a tremendous amount of fun. Keith uh, has been great to work with, and. Uh, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a, we've taken it seriously to create a new paradigm. We think um, we're obviously in tough times right now, and, and we think, we hope we come out one of these days, but we think when we come out, the future isn't about getting the past back on track. The future is about sustainability. One of the tenets of this project will be um, at least Florida Green Building Coalition certification, if not LEED. Mm -hmm. um, David and I have built three of, I think, the only four FGBC uh, certified homes in the county. Um, we want this to be 
the Windsor of Indian River County that the public gets to see, not that uh, is uh, locked behind a guard gate. So um, that's Sunnyside Up. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Our team is here uh, to answer any of the detailed questions you might have. And uh, we thank you for the opportunity to present the project. Richard, Richard what are your height on your buildings there? Um, Craig, I, I labeled on, on a longer presentation, I labeled the elevations. L let's put it this way, none of them exceed 35 feet to the, you know, to the ceiling Correct. above the finished floor okay. and 15 feet above that. They, they vary to some extent, obviously some of the single family homes are, are single story, but, but the tallest buildings are within the 35 plus 15 uh, requirement. In the residential area, where I know we've got single, um, the single story by the other residentials, mm -hmm. your, your neighbors, what, what kind of plans or have you all laid out plans for the rest of the houses? Is it, are you going to let the, try and let the market demand? Are you going to every other house? What were your thoughts on two story houses? You know, we've, we've had a problem probably, uh, in our own mind of, about close together two story homes that become like little walls. I didn't know if, if you, have you, Drawn your look into the housing yet? Well, you know, yes and no. I mean, quite honestly, it's not going to be a stipulation. It's yeah, quite honestly, as an architect, I actually don't have that problem of two story. I mean, I think when you talk about McMansions, yeah, but I, but I don't think this is the place for McMansions on these sites. So I would imagine a variety of one and two story homes, with probably not having the two story homes shoulder to shoulder, uh, because in most cases we in, in the um, preliminary plan book that we submitted that, that I hope is in your package, um, uh, we show courtyard type zero lot line houses and that doesn't work very well when you have the courtyard and the, and the guy on your other side is two stories. Um, our architectural approach will be a pretty much a back to the future uh, traditional design. We'll probably go to some of the same architects and some other architects uh, to each design a model. Um, our, our intention is to make it special, not to make it uh, same old, same old track sprawl architecture. I didn't see any gates, Richard. Is that by design? Any, I, I'm sorry, you didn't see any? There won't be any gates? No, I, you know, I think, you know, Windsor's an interesting anomaly to the notion of, uh, you know, a, the notion of a gated new urbanist traditional neighborhood development. Uh, yeah. it, there's a disconnect there. This yeah. is absolutely about connectivity. You know, we offered the Rivera um, estate <coughs> folks the ability to connect either uh, pedestrian or vehicularly, and they, they ran away screaming, saying no. And quite honestly, I don't know why. Uh, I think it's a mistake on their part, but it was, it was their choice, and uh, uh, we're big believers in connectivity. In fact, between Bella Vista, Bella Rosa, um, Sunnyside Up, and Woodlands, uh, there's close to a thousand homes that will take access through our development to the mall, uh, meaning for all but 423 of those homes, none of the, those, those residents will have access to 1.3 million square feet of commercial space without going on a county road. Um, and I believe, you know, you take a thousand homes going with the ability to go through our town center is that 2,2500 people. It makes our town center a very viable little, uh, mm -hmm. minor yes. downtown Good area. Point. Yeah. Make the demographics. Any other questions? Yeah. Gary? Uh, parking for the condos and town hall and the townhomes under, under the buildings? Uh, the, the townhomes are garages, uh, uh, dual car garages from alleyways between the, the two buildings. Right. The town center um, is, is a podium with a, a basically a structured parking on grade with two levels of residences above with a large courtyard in the middle. So when you're on the podium, you, you essentially feel like you're outdoors. There are large planter areas and, and potted planted areas. The condominiums have, um, uh, again, structured parking on, on the lower floor with um, units above and, again, wide hallways that, that become courtyards in the center of the buildings. The atrium apartments have some on-grade parking with garages, some parking under the buildings, and then, of course, the single-family homes are single-family homes. Because I notice it looks like a lot of parking along that one group of um, atrium homes, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, Just okay. to the west of the single-family homes, that area. Yes. Um, there, there, yes, there, there is on-grade parking behind those. There's on, in the atrium apartments, there's only some parking um, underneath the building. But the 
parking is screened from the street. Uh, it's buffered by the uh, by upland uh, the hammock area behind it. Um, the, the goal here is to not let parking dominate in any way. That, that buildings address the street. Okay. Thank and you, Greg. I'd just like to compliment you on your design, your vision. Uh, it's uh, I love to see things like this that are so divergent from the national groups that came into our county in the last mm -hmm. 10 years and, and did their thing. This is uh, very nice. refreshing. Thank you. You know, I, I get people arguing saying, well, but people like sprawl and they like that kind of community. And, and you know, the kind of response is, well, yeah, they probably do, but where is their alternative so you really know what the answer is? And we continually have people tell us, oh, you know, that I'd like to live in a place like that. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, what's, what's the reverse of it, you know, to the bubble reforming in some way or another, to, to being able to move forward here in, in the future. I, I appreciate uh, that, you. though, very much. Any other questions? Okay. I don't think so. This is a pub... A public. Okay, go ahead. Bridget. What about the recreational activities within the development? Recreational. Well, you, you know, we have two um, group uh, outdoor pool areas with with recreation meeting hall rooms. We have uh, that outdoor plaza that you see when you enter uh, enter from 26th Street. We believe that the sidewalk experience itself, with the arcades and outdoor tables. Is, is itself a kind of public space. The mall's um, created wetlands and uh, retention area are really, they're available right now for, uh, you know, public access. So we have an incredible nature amenity. I mean, you know, you're looking at a 40-acre development, but, you know, in, in reality, you're looking at about a 75-acre development with 35 acres of it being uh, a natural amenity. A natural amenity. Sure, uh, and then in, within the 18.1 ordinance, we're required to have a certain amount of civic uses. Um, I think it's in the staff report, but that could be a post office. It can be a public meeting hall. Um, there, are, there are a number of things <coughs> that fall under those definitions. As, as we get down to details, we will be including those. Uh, Amenity package. In terms of activities, which was, was your question, I, I think uh, you know, we're, we're not that far along. Uh, we just like uh, tennis courts or something like that. Um, no, there are, there are no tennis courts. Uh, the recreation is all passive recreation: swimming, and walking. Uh, the tennis courts take up a fair amount of room, and for that many people, we'd have a lot of tennis courts. So, and the answer there is no. Okay. Any other questions? This is a public hearing, Thank so. You. The uh, public hearing is open. Would anyone care to speak to the project? Students included. <laughs> Should I pick somebody or <laughs> close the public hearing? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Any other comments or questions? If not, we need a motion. Move approval. Staff uh, recommendation. Motion to move. Um, one exception there. there. And, yeah. Is that with the uh, request? The Bruce May, that would be the uh, yes. if not, um, must meet landscaping requirement on their own property. Yes. Addition. Okay. Yeah. A motion. I'll, do I have I'll a second? second that. Craig seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like, pose like sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you all for coming. Looks great, guys. Uh, Beautiful project. Under Commissioner's Matters, anybody have anything? Better. Wish everybody a happy I've, holiday. It's a shame he's not here to be wished. It's, it's, it's a shame he's not here to be wished well as uh, we received the resignation of George Lawrence today. He served us honorably and well, and I, we wish him well. So he will be missed, and we'll look forward to whoever, I guess it's Mr. Solari or whomever his new appointment is to those of us who are left, because on January 6th, they get to vote on all of us, and on January 8th, we're scheduled for a meeting, if, in fact, we have a meeting. So I, I, I would hope we don't, but um, <laughs> okay. which would be it. I'd put in a recommendation if I could. So I'll second that. <laughs> um, under planning matters. Just a few things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since your last <clears throat> meeting on November 13th, um, on November 18th, the Board of County Commissioners approved, uh, adopted the evaluation appraisal report, and uh, we expect to hear positive things from DCA probably in January on that to finalize that. The text amendment that you all looked at for the coastal high hazard zone and mobile home um, rental parks and allowing RVs, the Board um, 
okayed the text amendment for the coastal high hazard, but they eliminated the, uh, the text amendment portion for allowing a percentage of RVs in mobile home rental parks. Yes. Hmm. They, I, I think the decision there was just basically that it was, uh, there's just too many concerns um, from they didn't want to have from, to, they from didn't residents. Have to monitor. They didn't want to have to wait yeah. until the LDR time, I think, for it mm -hmm. all to be tied down. On December 9th, the board uh, approved the rezoning and small scale amendment on US 1 at 67th Street that the Realtors Association um, had applied for and, and y'all had recommended for that. At the mining workshop, and I know at least three of you all were there uh, for at least parts of it, and maybe more. Oh, he's hitting on me on uh, the left. Just, just a few things. The Board of County Commissioners got partway through the, uh, the proposed amendments and continued it to December 19th at 9 a.m. And we, um, they got through basically about the first 10 pages of the ordinance. They decided not to reclassify mines as special exception uses, went with version two, the administrative <coughs> permit plus public notice and so forth. They, um, they also voted that the applications, the three applications in the pipeline that have been on hold will come under and be subject to the new regulations. They also um, voted that the hydrology report and expert review uh, will be uh, the new requirement. There was quite a bit of discussion about the, the PNZ recommendation of having the St. John's expertise or having the, the expert review or maybe even an option to have either or, but they wound up with um, what, was, what was written. And they got all the way through to where um, we have the setbacks for, from wetlands and so forth. They discussed that for a while but didn't approve that. But they approved everything before that, about the first 10 plus pages. So we'll start out again on the, uh, on the 19th. And I believe um, there's some research that we're doing based on the discussion staff is doing. And uh, we should have the packet out for that. I understand it's going to go out Monday. Uh, for the board, so we'll make that available. I know you all are on the interested parties list, and as soon as we have that, we'll email it out to you. That's all that I have. Um, I appreciate the members that did go. I was unable to attend. I will not be able to attend the 19th, but I look forward to the outcome. Um, as to January the 8th, I do have the following. I, I was kidding earlier, but I don't. If there's any way, you know, if, if for two reasons. One, you have if you're going to have new appointments. In two days, that's, I think it's two days prior to that. Um, not that it matters. It is the national championship football game, which is probably more important than the important than the, the appointments. But if uh, business aside of government life without national football is, uh, is there any way that we can we could formally request that you all postpone our meeting? I mean, we I know that you probably will work hard to do that, but unless we really have something, I'd. Um, I'd, I'd like to see us put it off until the second week, the second Thursday in January. We, we've been advising applicants that it, w it was preferred for a few, for, for especially for, for the reasons of possibly having new PNZ members, um, and uh, and also I think there'd be some that that couldn't even make that meeting. Right, and you have less here. than that. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure that we can cancel the meeting, but we, we've advised people that we probably won't have the January 8th I, meeting. The only reason I ask is, if, in, in, in which we probably could do if I asked for a motion, I imagine it could, my, I, my gut says it might pass, but if we did that, I, you know, I don't want to ch rock the boat, but I, I really think the feeling of most of us is that we'd like to have it postponed. Well, if you don't have a quorum, then you can't have a meeting, but I don't think we well, can I think not. People, most people, everybody up here is responsible. If we have a meeting, they'll, those, of us, those people in town, those of us in town will show. I just, I think that it would be prudent if we could unless we have some major item. I, I, the staff's heard it, so maybe they can work around it. Well, you know, one other thing that we we could do about just suggesting and it makes sense um, we could we could reserve the the 15th the following Thursday oh, that's a good idea. and if for some reason somebody had to absolutely have something you know that week rather than the 27th I, mean, I just we are obviously with with George going we know we've got at least one new appointment there may be a, several of us or several others that are shuffled around and it, it gives them at least ch a chance to sit down with you and get acclimated rather than hopping into the middle of a meeting right right away so. If if, the, if that's the, it's it's fine with me. If uh, it's fine with everybody else, the other possibility would be start the meeting earlier because I think the game is at eight thirty. It's at eight or yeah. I mean they'll drag that out forever. Yeah. So you know there'll be plenty of time and but 
at any rate, that's there. You all have the request. The we, we appreciate your input. <laughs> if we get, you know, the 15th is fine, but if we, it may not be enough stuff we can get by with one meeting for the month anyway. So, okay. Who's, who's playing what, George? The sister, Sisters of a Little Mary's Church against. <laughs> okay. Attorneys matters? N nothing tonight. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.